Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. So today we're going to be looking at another retro refurb video. And uh, basically what we're going to be looking at doing today is reshelling a Game Boy Advanced SP. So this is an AGS-001 model. What we'll be doing is we'll be refurbing it by reshelling it into a uh, reproduction or uh, NES model. So basically I got the shell off of AliExpress for about 10 bucks and we're going to go through the process of what it's like to reshell a Game Boy SP. So if you guys want to, you know, buy one of these used Game Boys for cheap because the 001 models go for not too much. I picked this one up for only $15 because it was banged up and it didn't have a charger. Uh, and you're able to pick them up for pretty cheap and by refurbing them you can get them looking pretty pretty good. And the front light is, not, you know, it's not, it's obviously not as good as the 101 model, but it still plays pretty well. So let's take a look. Let's first dismantle this Game Boy. Okay guys, so first step in dismantling the Game Boy, you're going to need a small Phillips head screwdriver. We're going to be removing the battery pack. We're going to be setting that aside. Obviously, we're going to have to reuse this battery. Now we're going to switch to our tri-wing screwdriver and we're going to remove the screws on the bottom of the casing. Perfect. So now we have our Game Boy open. I am going to keep the original shell. The reason why is because I'm most likely going to be repainting it into a different model after this for a future project. So now we have the uh, basic motherboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to remove the motherboard. For this we're going to have to switch back to our Phillips head screwdriver. And there are normally three screws holding it down. So we're going to get those screws off. And first thing where you're going to want to do when you flip the motherboard over is detach the screen to make sure that you don't damage the ribbon cable. Like so. Now you're going to set the motherboard aside. I'm going to be reusing the original rubbers from the original Game Boy SP because I find they're a little bit more responsive than the imitation versions you get with most shells. But other than that, uh, you can set all your buttons aside and whatnot. Now before going any further, you have another little screw here that you're going to want to remove beneath the hidden generally by the ribbon. This is to release the top side so that we are able to remove the screen. Now before going any further and detaching the screen, I'm going to give a good cleaning to the PCB. Now this is an optional step and it depends on what shape your Game Boy is in, but I take advantage since we have it apart, it's not something you're going to want to take apart every day, I'm going to give it a good cleaning. So I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol with a toothbrush over lightly all the parts, all the connectors. If there's any grime or corrosion that started setting in, this is going to help. I give special attention to the connectors so that you can get a lot of isopropyl alcohol in it. Don't worry, this won't damage the components at all. And you give it a good scrubbing in there. Especially these connectors can get grimy and since you don't really know you know what type of household some of these used Game Boys you get come from, it's not a bad idea to give it a good cleaning and a good scrub down like this. You can always chew the shoulder buttons, sometimes get a little lack responsiveness with time. I like putting a little isopropyl alcohol 
playing with them a little, making sure it gets in there. And lastly, I give a lot of attention to the cartridge slot, because sometimes with time, it starts reading cartridges less well, and getting in there with a scrubbing tool can sometimes fix up a lot of problems. So for this I use a denture brush which has a little bit longer bristles and gets in there, gets in there deeper and generally gives it a better clean. I give it another shot with some WD-40. This really is going to, so after you've gone over it with isopropyl alcohol, this sort of gives it a coating, prevents corrosion. And honestly, I've been using this for years and it sometimes does magic at even bringing back some parts. Now the reason I do this ahead of time is because we're going to set it aside to dry while we get the screen out and finish uh, disassembling the Game Boy. Okay, so now while our PCB is drying, let's go attack the front of the housing and remove the screen. So first thing is if you removed your screw from underneath, this would just fall out, which will give you access to the ribbon cable. But before we actually do that, you want to take the smallest flat head you have and what we're going to do is we're going to remove all of these little uh, pads here to give us access to the screws that are holding in the screen. So if you're going to want to reuse the shell, you're going to want to try to not damage them and put them aside because if you want to eventually repaint your shell and uh, have it aesthetically pleasing without having the, <laughs> the screws showing, you want to try and work at them gently like, I, like I'm doing to not damage any of the rubber grommets that are basically covering the screws. So at this point you want to flip back to your tri-wing screwdriver. Now oddly enough I've seen some of these with Phillips heads on the screen, but this one has tri-wings, so that's what we're going to be using. Perfect. Now your housing should open and give you access to your screen. Now you're going to want to be careful not damage the ribbon cable. I'm going to do this off camera because at the angle I'm at it's really difficult for me to work at it properly but it's really important that you put no tension on the ribbon cable because even a slight damage to it could make your screen unusable. So like I said I'm going to work on this off camera and we'll get right back to it after for removing the rest of the parts we need. Perfect so there we go we've got the screen off so I'm going to once again set this one aside. We're going to clean it off and uh, the last part you actually need from the casing are the hinges here on the side because most shell kits do not come with replacement hinges. So basically from the open position what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to fit a screwdriver in. Oh, and this one came out actually pretty easy. Sometimes they come out a lot harder than that. So. After you got that first one off, you can remove the back of the housing. And for the second one, you can actually just remove this completely. And often, your other side is just going to fall out like that. So these hinges you're going to need to transfer to your new Game Boy, to the new Game Boy shell. Because like I said, most shell kits do not come with replacements. Okay, and now for reassembly. So we're going to work in the reverse order we did earlier. So basically we have the top shell here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to secure in our screen.
Perfect, so at this point we're going to thread the ribbon cable through the casing. Now getting it in is much easier than getting it out generally. There we go. Now you can reset your hinges. Generally, you want to always reset them in the open position. And if you look on the inside, you have little tabs that let you, that guide you into what position exactly they should be going in. Now, for the next step, you're going to want to replace the ribbon cable gently. Now, I'm going to most likely do it off camera once again, as I did earlier, just because at an angle like I am now filming for you guys, it's a little difficult and I do not want to damage this ribbon cable because it's it's the most delicate part of the process. Oh, actually, I think I got it. Yeah, there we go. I got that in there. So finally, I was able to do it for you guys on camera. Now we're gonna take our small Phillips head and we're gonna secure down the motherboard. And I didn't, I didn't say it earlier, but I recommend using the screws that come with your replacement shell. Even if they might seem lower quality than the original ones, it's honestly, sometimes the threading is not exactly the same size as the original screws, and you can actually d damage your replacement shell by trying to reuse the original screws. So I really recommend using the ones that come with your replacement shell. Now, for the last step, we're going to get now, we're going to close this to protect the screen. We're going to replace the bottom. Make sure the buttons are lined up. They seem good. We're going to switch back to our tri-wing screwdriver. Oh, I almost forgot. This is actually a good thing that I forgot because you want to make sure to place you have a little metal square that you need to place there that's so that your screw holds on the battery cover so you want to make sure not to forget to pop that in there before closing up your Game Boy So, now let's pop our battery back in. And we already know it's working because the power switch was flipped to on. So that's a nice surprise there. We'll pop a game in later, right after to make sure. Let's turn it off for now. Last one here. Our Phillips screw for our battery cover. And as you saw, we got ourselves a working Game Boy. There we go. So all we have left to do is place the stickers here, like the rubber stickers on the screws, and the one top sticker here that says Nintendo that should come with your Game Boy. So I'm gonna place those off camera, and then we're gonna take a look at the real final product.
So for 30 minutes of time and $10, I think I'm pretty satisfied with the results. You should be getting close-ups right now on screen. And honestly, uh, although you can tell that it's not an original Game Boy by touching it, if you're used to touching uh, original Game Boys, you'll feel that the quality of the plastic is not quite a Nintendo quality. But overall, I'm very satisfied with the results. Uh, I'm going to be putting this Game Boy SP in my personal collection. I've always wanted the uh, reproduction NES model. They're going for pretty expensive online right now, so this reproduction will be more than enough for me, since you know I'm a fan of budget systems. Uh, and when, if you, so, if you do, if you guys have an old or banged up Game Boy SP, or if you're just you know in a, sort of a garage sale or a flea market, and you pick one up. I can really recommend reshelling it, and there's actually a lot of models out there. You have special, you know, reproductions of the special edition Pikachu Game Boy, uh, the special Mario edition. There's a lot out there, so I would strongly recommend looking into it. I hope you guys liked this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, any comments, anything I could have done better. Uh, I know that some of the camera work was a little iffy, but I was alone filming it this time, so uh, sometimes when I realized it wasn't focused or centered, it uh, might took a, t take me a couple of seconds to refocus it. Sorry about that. Guys, I'll try to have someone working the camera for next time so that I can really just focus on uh, the refurbing. So, as usual, Please drop a like, please subscribe, it really helps the channel a lot. Uh, the next couple of videos we'll be getting back to some computer videos most likely. We're going to be doing a new budget build uh, based on the AMD FX series. So if any of you are into computers as well, do check it out. Uh, my channel does not only retro gaming but also uh, computers. Uh, which is computer gaming because that is my primary passion. Although I love retro gaming, I spend most of my time computer gaming. Almost dropped that right there. Uh, so thank you for watching and I hope I'll catch you guys in my next video.